Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express podcast. We're a little bit delayed this time because we had the Carnegie plague going around. <laughs> so now we can actually talk to you and you can understand us as opposed to just gargling and the squeaking. Death, the death. <laughs> so uh, I am Tyler and I'm always with Kara here. Our newest employee who's going to be joining us on the podcast is Mackenzie. Hello. So, Mackenzie, if you'd like to just state what you do here and where you went to college. Yeah, so I went to the University of Rhode Island, and at Carnegie Darlet, I am the marketing assistant for the College Express program, so I do all their social media updates, answer feedback emails, maintain the blogging, maintain more emails, and work on the giveaway and campaigns for College Express. So I'm very excited for Mackenzie to, one, be a part of the team, but also be on this podcast every single month, so uh, very excited. (laughs) The strange man on the side here <laughs> is uh, our buddy, John. So John is also working with us. He doesn't work for College Express directly, but he does work in the office. So if you want to talk about what you do and sure. where you went to school. Sure, yeah. I'm the strange guy at the end. Uh, I'm John. <laughs> uh, I went to three colleges. I started at the University of Pittsburgh, got sick, which will be handy when we talk about that in a little bit. Then Middlesex Community College, got my associate's degree there. And then the University of Massachusetts Amherst, got my sports management degree there, and I'm clearly using it now, so that's going, <laughs> going pretty well. Uh, here at Carnegie, I do uh, digital advertising, so the annoying ads you see on Google and Facebook. Tyler makes them. I put them there. Uh, been here for a little over three years now, and uh, that, that's that's me. Right. Yeah, so uh, very excited to be back, and we do apologize for that delay. This week, or month, I should say, we're going to be talking all about maintaining your health, because that was a big issue, and just... How to get back into the swing of things for the new year and make yourself better. So, new Hashtag year. Hashtag new year, new, new me. Year. <laughs> oh, right. so, or new uh, you. <laughs> Whichever one you want to say. Whatever you like. So, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, jump right in. So, our first question is, how can you maintain your health in college? So, this is uh, a constant struggle. I don't know if you are familiar with the freshman 15 or the freshman 500, hmm. but uh, those things are both very real. And uh, you need to take the time to not only just consider about uh, how you can maintain health or if you want to get better, uh, but that includes healthy eating, uh, going to the gym and working out, uh, doing activities that don't involve just sitting in your room all day and uh, having a good time. But uh, for me personally, uh, I had uh, uh, the reverse happen. Uh, I didn't have the freshman 15 in a negative way. I actually lost weight when I joined. So, really? Uh, I, yeah, I was Lucky. fairly <laughs> active in high school. Uh, and then when I got into college, I ended up meeting a guy that I am an early bird. John knows this for sure. Uh, whenever we go out <laughs> anywhere, whenever I sleep at John's house, uh, <laughs> uh, I am up at 4 a.m. or, or oh. earlier. Uh, so I would get up really early and go to the uh, hall at... Champlain College, and there was only one kid that was sitting there. Nice. So I went up and started talking to him. So you can go back and listen to our making friends in college, and that's in the that, uh, story. But uh, we both decided that hey, well, we're up early enough anyway, so why don't we go down to the gym? And uh, so that happened, uh, which was good for the beginning of freshman year. And then I didn't mesh too well with mm-hmm. this kid as the, oh. the, the time went on. Uh, so it, it fell out. But uh, one of the biggest tips of advice I can give you is that if you decide that you're going to go to the gym and you're going to be working out consistently, find a buddy. Yep. My big thing was if uh, when I became a sophomore, my friend British, who hmm. uh, great story behind his name, he's British. <laughs> <laughs> so, really? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> But uh, him and I decided that we were going to get into shape sophomore year after freshman was successful, but uh, had a falling out. So him and I went to the gym every single day for the week. And then on the weekends, we kind of like clicked on and off. But whenever I wasn't feeling like going, he would push me. And then if I didn't or he didn't feel like going, I'd push him. So having somebody that's consistently with you to be in that routine and be like, hey, I know it sucks. I know you don't want to go down there. I don't know. You know. But let's do it. And the other best tip advice I can give you is that even your worst day doing it is better than not doing it at all. So Mm -hmm. get there and at least attempt it. That's true. I always found it helpful going to the uh, workout classes they had because I was never good at figuring out what to do at the gym. I would do like the treadmill for half an hour and think I was good. So me and my friends would all go to like the classes at like 5 o'clock, like Zumba or spin or yoga. I wasn't good at yoga, but we went... (laughs) 
no. and as, <laughs> as long it was as a good like, workout. That's all that matters. Yeah, it was like a forty-five minute workout. Yeah. You really got in all the sweats, and yeah, it was great. It's like three times a week. It's perfect. Yeah. And one of the things you want to do is making sure that you find the thing that you like. So like good. I hate treadmill and the elliptical <laughs> and the stationary bike they don't make sense to me but like all the girls would go and do that stuff so I was like well I don't fit in this gym I'll go to the dance classes and stuff and then I started powerlifting and that's what I do I go to the gym and I powerlift I'll be there for about an hour hour and a half now and I started doing that in college and it was like finding finding my niche and it made my day I was like I'm going to the gym today I'm so excited and I can like lift stuff now and I can I don't need anyone's to help to move a couch or well I do need someone's help to move a couch because it's big but like <laughs> bench press is a couch <laughs> but like you know it it was really empowering it made me feel really good about myself and just you know health wise it you know uh, going to the gym, working out, sets off endorphins. So if you're having a rough day, you might say, I don't want to go to the gym. But if you do, it will actually help you feel better. And it's a really good way to relieve stress um, and just kind of help your like your body stay in motion. Your body wants to move. It wants to do stuff. And like stay within your limitations if you're like – or stay within what makes you happy. So like if you don't want to lift stuff and move a couch by yourself <laughs> – don't do that but like go to a yoga class and even if you're like not good at it or you don't think you're good at it like just do it try it out yeah, yeah. try it out do if you don't have to be like the best dancer in the class to go to a dance mm-hmm. class just you're having fun that's all that matters well it's even uh you brought up the classes but intramurals too yeah uh oh, think, yeah. depending on if you you know do flag football or uh, i was a big ultimate frisbee guy mm-hmm. so uh getting down on the field and just throwing frisbee around uh it was a lot of fun so there's there's a slew of different opportunities for you yeah. to just kind of get out there and find something that clicks. And it's so easy coming up with excuses too. Yeah, yep. that's where the advantage of having a friend go with you is because I know, I I don't know how big Champlain's gym was or URI's small, gym, small. but <laughs> UMass Amherst had a pretty big gym, a couple basketball courts, but so many students there, over twenty thousand, that every machine is almost always taken. Yep. So there were so many times I'd go there, go through the effort, get changed, get to the gym, and say to myself. It's too crowded. Yeah. And just turn right back home and go have ice cream or something. Yeah, so. and I mean, also work on, like, off hours, too. I would go between classes sometimes, yeah. and I, yeah. I would go to class. Thank you, but I'm like, whatever. I'm not sitting there anyone anyway. Um, sure. And they're, they, have, they have showers at the gym, too. Um, so, the, and they're, like, right there. If it's, like, you have a weird break between classes, like, every once in a while you have, like, a three-hour break between yeah. classes, and you're like, well, I don't want to go back to my dorm. Because then, like, by the time I get there, I, you know, there's no time for a nap or to watch a full Netflix episode. Like, go to the gym, work out for 20 minutes, half an hour, take a quick shower, or don't go to class. Like, or grab a bite to eat on your way to class and something like that. Like, do, like, it's super easy. Um, also, healthy eating is super important. It can be difficult on a college campus, but there are also so many options and so many of them at one point. <laughs> at one point, I was with my friends, and I had, like, just started my workout kick. And I was like, guys, you know what? I feel like I'm going to have dessert tonight. And I went over, and there were no good desserts out. The, like, cookies weren't out. The brownies looked dry. There was nothing but fruit. And I'm like, I don't want fruit right now. So I turned around, and they had broccoli. They had like, freshly steamed broccoli. Yeah, we're cooking. Broccoli. <laughs> so I go and grab a bowl, and I sit down. And they're like, are you having broccoli for dessert? And I'm like, hell yes. <laughs> sit there eating my broccoli. So do that every once in a while. I mean, or don't. Like, make yourself happy. But, you know, broccoli's delicious, guys. Uh, broccoli. Did you put anything on the broccoli, or was it Salt just pepper. plain? Oh. <laughs> that That's, was a dessert. Yeah. <laughs> that was the dessert part. They Sounds didn't have great. <laughs> no, like, chocolate sauce or anything to at mm, least make it yum. kind of a dessert? Chocolate broccoli or chocolate broccoli. sauce? A little no. caramel on top of that, too? <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkles. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, I think uh, my, my biggest issue is actually the healthy eating aspect of things uh, because everything's so much easier to just grab something quick at the calf and uh, mm-hmm. it's like hamburgers and pizza. You know, pizza yeah. yeah, pizza's a big one for sure and mm-hmm. definitely in college and still in my life today. So um, that I always struggle with and yeah. it's, I find it really useful to have an app on your phone to track what you're eating. Yeah. Uh, it will also give you a rough estimate of what the calories are. If you want to get really anal about it and get in there and say <laughs> what the measurements are yeah. and what it is, you can get right down to the, the very nitty gritty. Uh, but the best part about that is one, it tracks your food intake so you can see what is really high in calories yeah. and what's not, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. But it also tracks when you're exercising too. So if you plug in whatever yeah. you did for the day, it's going to give you the deficit so you're at a pretty good understanding yeah. of 
here's where I am, here's where I want to be. If you want to lose weight, gain weight, depending on what yeah. you're trying to do. Uh, that is one of the best yeah. uh, things to have in your arsenal yeah. for when you're trying to maintain health. Yeah, okay. I was, oh, no, go no good. I always thought it was difficult eating in the dining hall because you never knew how many calories were in the yep. food because they don't list that out. And I actually would um, have these, like, grab-and-go smoothies my freshman year, and I got, like, three a day because I'm like, oh, they're smoothies, they're healthy, it's fine, I can eat that. Yep. Ate it for probably, like, three months straight, three a day, and I was gaining weight, and I was like, all I'm eating is these smoothies. What is happening? I found out there's actually no fruit in the smoothies. Yep. It just comes from a carton, and there's, like, it's all sugar. Yeah. And so like you can smoothies. definitely ask them, yeah. yeah. You can definitely ask like the workers uh, what's in the food and yeah. they can tell you what it's the typically ingredients available are online too. Yeah, it's yeah. online. And I think Sodexo, if you have like the Fitbit app that has like the barcode scanner for food, Sodexo, at least at Champlain, would put out like barcode scanner things. And I think on my fitness pal too, Sodexo partners with them so that you can see like you can scan it, you can say, Oh, this is how many calories, this is how many um, how much fat, how many carbohydrates, how many, how much oh, protein cool. is in there, I think, yeah, um, and they, they would list it out too, but that, that information does have to be available to you, even if it's available online, or you have to ask them for it, um, but it can be made available to you, um, and I just wanted to make sure we're, it's clear that we're not saying, like, this is what you have to do to lose weight, like, if you want to just, like, maintain your weight, if you want to gain weight, just, like, leading a healthy life is important, we're not saying that anyone has to, like, lose weight or become a perfect fit or anything like that we're just giving you advice on how to be healthy sorry Simple i just say that yeah if you want yeah, yeah. yeah. make a little like change like, in like, new year's resolution yeah, yeah. so like you it, feel depending on what yeah. you want to do yeah. so you feel good about like the way you're moving and all that like movement like makes you happy eating vegetables eating fruits makes your body happy and um like if every once in a while i have a piece of cake and i'm like not i mean like <laughs> not mentally happy physically I guess. physically yeah i mean like i've been eating cake and chocolate and everything the last week and i'm like i just i want a vegetable yeah, I and really it makes you more tired. tired. Never said that. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. I, uh, one thing I also want to bring up too is you said going on off hours to the gym if you're trying to get in. Uh, also, I worked at Champlain at the gym desk. Mm -hmm. If you are unfamiliar with any of the equipment or you need somebody to talk to you before you go in, there's usually somebody posted there that you can talk to and ask about the equipment. If you feel uncomfortable about any of that, go early in the morning, talk to somebody, or late at night. Uh, usually that's the time for uh, at least Champlain. I don't know about your experiences. There yeah. was nobody in the gym. There's like the two gym rats that are just <laughs> loudly grunting, and that's yeah. about it. But um, yeah. I also walked a lot on campus yeah. because I walk. didn't go to the gym too much. So uh, my campus was on a hill. The dorms were at the bottom, and all the classes were at the top. So I would just walk to class yeah, instead of take the class. bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd like... Uh, kind of explore campus I ended up finding like a secret garden on the side oh, of my campus so it's kind of like yeah fun. secret yeah. talking homes <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> sorry you're right <laughs> um we should also probably talk about like not being sick health. yeah because that's obviously a problem even to adulthood <laughs> um you got to take care of yourself if you're sick like if that means missing one class like do it and sleep through it but email your professor like let them know be like I woke up and I'm coughing really loudly my throat's really sore I don't know what's going on I haven't had my flu shot so it could be the flu um or I did have my flu shot so it's probably not the flu probably but the flu. it probably still is <laughs> the they flu. Inject you with the flu <laughs> that's not <laughs> no there are sometimes different one thing strains of flu <laughs> Like last year, everyone got the flu shot, and then they like everyone still got the flu because it was a different strain that went around, and everyone was still sick, but not as bad. Um, so like, keep in open contact with your professor. Go to health services and be like, "Hey, I'm really sick. What's the issue? Is it strep throat? Is it the flu? Is it mono?" Which all go around campus like wildfire, especially among freshmen. Gonna see a lot of kids in the health clinic oh, yeah. when you go in. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, like, that's really important. Wash your hands, and that'll help you get rid of bacteria so that you don't get sick. And Keep your dorm room eyes. clean. <laughs> Keep What's your dorm room clean. wipes. Yeah, yeah, you talked about, like, skipping a class if you're feeling sick. Uh, if there's a big party and you're not feeling so well, probably hang out. <laughs> because if you go down there and yep. you partake in substances, uh, yeah. that might not help you. Or that even staying up till help. 2 in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. Get your rest. Yeah. Yeah. But talking about mono, I that's why I left Pitt after my first semester. I got mono uh, right during midterms, so I didn't necessarily miss a class. I missed 
everything. the tests. Yeah. So I, I had to leave. It was a wasted semester. Um, and I actually lost 32 pounds in two weeks. Yeah. So 32 pounds in two weeks. There's your diet. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, wow. There's just no way to eat, but yeah. you've got to take care of yourself. You know, that, yeah. it was one of those things where I, I personally don't like needles that much. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the only they have to take so much blood. They have to take blood. I had them do it out of the top of my hand. I felt oh. better that way. Really? I didn't know you could do Everyone that. Everyone says that's sweet. I didn't know either. I oh. just thought I'd ask. Did it hurt? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 but the thing is, you got to go get checked. My yeah. parents came and visited me. I was so sick. We were not able to even leave the room because yep. I'm just always sleeping. Yep. But you got to go to the doctors, got to get it checked. They took the blood. It hurt. Yep. Um, and at that point, I withdrew from Pitt, got my health back together, mm -hmm. and then went to community college, which isn't the worst transition there. You know, just take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially with something like... I got mono the second week of my second semester freshman year. Mm. And they're like, yep, everyone gets it. I read like an article that said by the time people are 24, almost every adult has had mono, just in ranging yeah. manners. So like, I had mono in strep, and I was like, I missed class for like a week or two. Some people don't even notice that they get it. Some people mm. get it like John and lose a bunch of weight in two weeks and are just can't yeah. do anything and the other thing I, too i sorry yeah. to interrupt but I, I think half the problem is they it's obviously known as the kissing disease yeah but that's only a chunk of it yeah water fountains doors kissing, the gym the gym make the sure you wipe <laughs> down your equipment before and after you use it because that's Absolutely. it goes through um bodily flu fluids and people in the gym are sweating so if you use a piece of equipment that someone hasn't wiped down then you could get mono Stop from that making out with that treadmill <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's there. It it's so common, and especially where like you're in a new environment, and not just like huge diseases like mono, but even like the first two weeks, everyone gets sick. Not mm -hmm. just freshmen, not just sophomores. Everyone gets sick because you're in this area with a whole bunch of people who have gone through airports and bus terminals and train stations and everywhere with all sorts of like a petri dish of diseases going through it and everyone gets sick especially because when you move there like there's different stuff in the air so like make sure you drink your uh, orange juice like um, the airborne vitamin c stuff is really good too mm -hmm. like just being preventative and trying to make sure you know drink tea tea is always good um and just you know a lot of it's just trying to maintain trying to prevent getting it um, stuff like that. So, like, wiping everything down with Clorox wipes. I'm not saying be a germaphobe, but little Just be bit clean. doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter. And some of it's unavoidable. Yeah. You're yeah. going gonna to get sick. You I can tell you that. Over college. the course of four years, you'll at least get sick four times, once yeah. per year. <laughs> and that's where you have to go to health services. You might be looking at an hour or two wait, but it's better to get that hour or two wait yeah. out of the way quick. It, well, I guess not quick, but get it out of the way. <laughs> and then from there, just start getting healthy, you know? Yeah rest eat skip class if you have to send an email to the professor half the time the professor will just write back sure no problem half yeah. the time they won't believe you and want a doctor's note yeah my yeah. sister so, mm -hmm. had that happen to her um just get the doctor's note yeah go to the doctor that's why it's especially helpful to go to health services yeah. especially if you're like i had to miss class a couple times because i was in health services and there was a long wait and i was like i'm gonna be late or i might not make it i'm in health services right now and the professor is very understanding if you especially if you ask them for like, what are we going to cover in class? And they don't explain that in the syllabus, but you mm -hmm. can be like, I see we're studying X. Can you send me the PowerPoint? Or can you send me notes from your lecture or something like that? Mm -hmm. And having friends in the class being like, hey, I'm missing class for because I'm sick. Can you send me notes? Can you share them with me on Google Drive or whatever? Um, just there are, there are so many ways, especially with technology, that you can miss class and not miss out on the information that you're getting, which is super important in college. And if the professor is not very nice about that, I always mm -hmm. find like going to their office hours yep. when you feel better, um, they switching appreciate classes. that a lot. Switching <laughs> that, switching yeah. If it's Getting not too late, try switching. Dropping out of college. <laughs> yeah, if it's the second week, just be like, no, I'm done with you. We're no, going no. on to a new one. That's a good point, though. Yeah, definitely if you have any issues, not even if you're just sick, but if you're having issues in the class and you're not, you're struggling and yep. having whatever reason, go and see them and they'll take into account that, that yeah, extra effort. Yeah, they take notice, yeah. yeah. But wait till you're not sick. Yeah, there's, don't go when you're sick. There's one thing that professors know. hate more than anything that's getting sick. If they're being rude that's to you, I though, mean, yeah. go when you're yeah. sick and just like come in with a handkerchief. <coughs> I'm so sorry, I couldn't make it to class. 
Mm-hmm. I really couldn't get out of bed. <coughs> Can I take a nap right here? So the theater class move. comes in handy. Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Take at least one acting class mm-hmm. to make that work. That's right. Our next question is, how did you cope with the stress of when you were applying and when you were in college? And how did your work ethic change from high school senior to college freshman to college senior? So let's tackle the first part um, first, uh, coping with stress during uh, college applications. Um, I didn't cope too well. I was very um, upset with everyone at all times, lots of mood swings. But if I were to go back and do it again, I would say the easiest way is to just break it down into parts. And I even did that, but it was just like I ended up piling most of the parts to the end because I'm a procrastinator. (laughs) Don't procrastinate, guys. Um, but like the minute that the common application opens, just go in and put in your basic information. Like your con- everyone's gonna the like basic stuff where it's what's your name, what's your address, um, your phone number, your email address, like all that basic information that's going through activities that you've been doing in high school. Mm-hmm. Just get that out of the way so that it's done and you don't even have to think about it anymore. And it's do easy a enough bit to do. At a time. Yeah. Instead of doing it like all at once, in, like four hour segments each night, the night before the deadline or the week before the deadline, go in and like just sort of piecemeal it. Just do different sections like once a week or something like that so that it's easier and it's less stress on you. And then when you're in college, basically the same thing, just break it down. One of the things that I did senior year, which I wish I'd done the rest of college, was at five o'clock on Friday night, I was done. If I didn't finish my homework, it wasn't getting done until Monday morning at 7 when I woke up. Um, And just that way I knew, like, the weekend was my time, Mm -hmm. and it was time for me to do things that I wanted to do. And if I had essays and things like that, I would work on them a little bit during the week. Um, I worked in the math lab for foundations of mathematics, so no one ever came to me for help. So while I was there, it would just do I don't think there was ever at the math lab. Exactly. No one came to me. Yeah, I don't know There was, we had, like, a math tutoring lab, and I, I... did really well. You went the Reading one. Yeah, the Reading Center didn't want me. It's fine. Wow. <laughs> the math lab did. Champlain. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. No grudges spared. I'm editing now, so whatever. Your loss. <laughs> That's right. So um, it is right. That's right. In. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I would write while I was supposed to be doing math and whatever so like if you like have one of those jobs like Tyler that's why no one came to the math lab she was writing (laughs) yeah I was writing every once in a while they come in and be like calculus can you help me with calculus and I'm like no (laughs) I have a question about derivatives go to this website and she made her own writing center (laughs) pretty much oh I just finished this math question can you help me with my essay yes please (laughs) So, yeah, if you have, like, one of those jobs or if you have, like, the desk job, like Tyler was saying, there's, there was always someone posted at the gym. And, like, if it's an off hours when no one comes, like, they're not going to notice if you're doing homework when oh, no, no one's they, they there. Every time they tell you. Yeah. 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 Keep busy. Yeah. So keep busy and just find those little pockets of time to, like, do things so that you're not rushing at it so that on, like, Saturday night you're not out with your friends and thinking, I have a huge essay due Monday and I haven't written a word. Just Got space it out. There. Yeah. I've been there for sure. Saturday night? Every day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Every day of my life. Wow. <laughs> Even now, it's like, I have so much work to do. I think the, going back to, well, I guess it applies to both in high school and in college when you're overwhelmed with things. I find lists to be extremely helpful uh, and setting deadlines and goals on those lists to be able to know what's coming up, what's due, what should I focus on, uh, priority lists especially. Uh, I know I can bang these projects out, they're all really easy, yep. so I'm just going to tackle those, I'll feel good, and then I can work on the big project. Uh, that always helps, even now into work life. That's something I've carried through, I guess, starting middle school, but yeah. tackling and bringing it along. Uh, but for the college application process, uh, one of the biggest resources I had was using my guidance counselor in high school. They had had a better idea of what the schedule looks like, what I should be doing, when I should be doing it. Uh, if your guidance counselor doesn't exist or you don't like your guidance counselor, doesn't college. Exist. <laughs> <laughs> Some places not exist. Some are home school <laughs> students. Yeah, Is true. it imaginary? <laughs> but uh, the, like the collegeexpress.com <laughs> has a great resource for all that material as well. And if you're logged in and signed in, you can save colleges and it will show your application deadline for the college on there as well. So that's also a good way to track it uh, and use that in your arsenal of. 
I always find when I was applying to colleges in high school, I was trying to do everything by myself, mm -hmm. and I had no idea what was going on. Um, so it took me a while to realize I can like fall back on my family and my older sibling who had been through it, and my friends who are currently going through it. Um, and I think that kind of goes along with college too. Is you know you go off to college and you're independent for the first time. Um, and for me, that was really hard because I'm so close with my family. Um, so I would call them like three times a week mm -hmm. and that would help with stress, just like talking about my problems with my family and just talking to them, seeing a picture of my dog. Sometimes they tried FaceTiming my dog and he'd run away. It was heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think it made more it was stress with FaceTime. It was because the dog was so sad. Yeah, it couldn't, it couldn't bear it. I think my dad was eating in the background, so yeah. he's like, I'm going to go hang out with him. Okay. You did not have food. I have but decided I didn't. dog I there. <laughs> My dog was also weirdly camera shy. He always knew when we were taking a picture of him and he'd run huh. away. Huh. You'll find that some people have stress pets or service animals yeah. that are around oh, and be yeah. friends with them. I had a stress bunny and she helped me a lot with stress. Like every once in a while I was like, I just need to hold my buddy and like pet her and everything. And then when I became an RA, um, students would like know that the bunny was there and they like every once in a while I have someone come up to the midterms and be like, Hey, Kara, how's it going? And just like hang out in my doorway, and I'd be like, I'm, I'm good. How are you? And they're like, Oh, you know, a little stressed. Got you know, good midterms. Is that a bunny? Can I pet the bunny? And I was like, Yeah, sure, go ahead. And they were like, So sorry. You were allowed so, to have pets in your dorm if they were a emotional support emotional animal. Support. I did get. I think the my neighbor had an emotional um, pet squirrel. <laughs> We had my squirrel. neighbors had a pet squirrel in there. We dorm, had a legit so. menagerie. Wow. My weird because we had yeah, that's weird. We had it three was bunnies, support, a puppy, two puppies, three bunnies, two puppies, and an emotional support snake, which caused me stress. Yeah. <laughs> Did the yeah. loss yeah. of stress? <laughs> They're like, I'm getting it. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. Really weird. This <laughs> guy walking around with the snake. <laughs> you were that, that guy. One. She <laughs> she had a snake around her and went into the cafeteria and someone reported her and she got mad at me and I was like, I didn't know about it, but also, why would you bring a snake into the cafeteria? Do they have to wear the little jackets that say like service? Yeah. Um, the, the we did have a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> we had a girl who had a <laughs> we had a girl who had a service dog yeah. and they had to wear it, but otherwise, <laughs> like the emotional support <laughs> pets, just like they had to stay in your rooms. It's so oh, like okay. they're. Sock. Yeah, so there's uh, only, I think there only dogs and miniature horses can be, like, classified legally as service pets. Miniature or, horses. Yeah. Is that just a pony? <laughs> <laughs> no, like Lil' Sebastian. Uh, what? Or, Lil' Sebastian from Parks and Rec. He was an actual, like, miniature hey. pony. They're, like, slightly bigger than dogs. Give me another reference. Um, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> I'm out then. Pony. Oh. There you go. So a pony. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. <laughs> but so there might be like um, different qualifications for what counts as a service pet um, or an emotional support pet at your school. But like, look at if you do need an emotional support pet, like look into it, see what you need to get. Uh, we needed uh, a doctor's note and a couple of other things, and we had to go. It had to be done before you got on campus and before the animal got to campus. But if you really think that'll help you with stress. Like, if your dog is super helpful and your parents don't mind taking your dog, you taking your dog to college, like, go for it. And as long as you're actually going to take care of the animal, because sometimes people don't, and it's very upsetting. Well, you mentioned, like, actually doing the paperwork and all that. I don't know if you had at Champlain, but they had certain days where they did, like, a puppy thing. Yes. Uh, where they just, like, brought in dogs and cats, and you could just hang out and be in a room. Most popular something, day on campus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. something else I did when I was in the math lab. There was no one there, and they were like, we have puppies downstairs. And I was like, I'm going to go pet puppies. <laughs> and it was great. And, yeah, especially during finals and midterms, a yeah. lot of colleges will put, like, in the library or at the tutoring center, they'll bring in a dog or cats or whatever to, like, have you just sit around and play with them. And it's yeah, great. we had therapy dogs come to our school, so yeah. they were very good at uh, cuddling with everyone. Uh -huh. Very friendly dogs. Oh, so I feel like therapy animals. dogs when you're applying. That would be better. When you're applying. When you're applying. Go to your local animal shelter and see if you can mm -hmm. volunteer. volunteer to play. Yeah. Yeah. There Good you go. Idea. That's Unless something you have to allergies. put. Yeah. There's Which something I to do. put on your application because you're <laughs> volunteering with animals and you get to play Good with point. animals. Good point. So That's there right. you go. It'll help you de stress and deal with your applications and look great on your resume. It's true. Mm -hmm. Play with more puppies. <laughs> Key yeah. to stress. It's also healthy stress relief to like go out for a run or go, yep. you know, if you're yelling or boxing or doing something to just get yep. that negative energy out. So that can 
be yeah. in both worlds. And taking time for yourself. I feel like in college, you're surrounded by so many people all the time, especially yeah. when you're a freshman. If you're in like a force triple, there's yeah. no space for Were yourself. You in a force triple? I was in a force triple, Me top too. bunk. Mm. Uh, oh, I had bottom bunk. Yours wasn't yeah. forced, you requested it. Did you request a triple? <laughs> no, no. Uh, so, <laughs> you never heard that. Yeah, uh, that kind of loops in with like the health too. Um, being in a forced triple with the spacing and everything was very unique. Tough. And the two guys knew each other before, and I was the third guy that got put in. And I was just um, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a fun situation to be in. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about the second part of the question how did your work ethic change from a high school senior to college freshman to college senior good question yeah i feel like mine was a roller coaster yeah yeah so senior year i was at a low point in high school uh where i knew i got into certain colleges at the start of it you you kind of have that that okay i gotta look good yeah. and then as soon as you get that acceptance letter it's like all right so, um, <laughs> kind of relax and, yeah. and coast by Uh, And then when I got into college, I wanted to make a great impression and show that I can really do all the work and really put my best foot forward. And so then it went up. And then when I was getting down to it, so mine's actually a little bit of a unique situation. It's not actually my senior year in college. It's my junior year of college. And then my senior goes back up again because... Uh, my schedule got mixed up completely, and I started taking senior level classes when I was a junior, and then vice versa. Uh, and basically, I was told at the end of my senior year that I wasn't going to graduate on time uh, because I was missing credits. Uh, and so I was able to uh, talk to the head of the IT department and then get into uh, the classes I was supposed to get into. I wasn't charged anything extra because it was a mix up in my schedule and on them. But my junior year was the easiest year of my life, where I only had four classes and I was off on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So that was probably the most laid back I've ever been in my entire life, and still to this point, and it was great. <laughs> so for that lack of uh, yeah. ability and uh, <laughs> relaxing on junior year, and then senior year kicked up again because it was like, oh, you're not gonna graduate. So um, You work hard when you hear those words. Yeah, and looping back to the procrastination bit, too, is uh, procrastination is usually a bad thing, but if you can use it and you know you're a procrastinator, uh, sometimes you're going to be working better under stress. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. And you can definitely see that in the roller coaster <laughs> of uh, my, my yeah. life, anyway. Uh, I always, uh, well, high, senior year of high school, I think I tried really hard at the end because they kept on scaring us that if we didn't keep up our grades, the school would take away the offer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was always really nervous about keeping up my grades. So senior year, I I, was, I did pretty well. Freshman year, um, I kind of went down a little bit. I tried hard, but I was also, you know, we were taking gen ed classes. Yeah. It's not yeah. really interesting to you. Um, so... I think I wasn't interested in the classes, so I went down a little bit. I picked up junior year because I went abroad to London. So um, I took a lot of interesting marketing classes in London. And so I went back up, tried really hard over there. And then senior year, I dipped down again because senioritis, when you're graduating, and you know, you've got all the credits in line. And it's still a little scary at the end because it's, it's like if one thing goes wrong, they're like, you're not going to graduate or you yeah. can walk, but you won't get the diploma. So it is important to keep everything in line and make sure you have all the paperwork in because there's a lot that goes into graduating yeah. when you're in college. Yeah, for me, similar to Tyler. Uh, well, let me preface this by saying my dad has a saying where college is way more fun when you have good grades. And I'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> So in high school, I was you know normal... 3.0 student, nothing too fancy, never never took a, an honors class, never really wanted or needed to, or I guess qualified for it. <laughs> uh, but I continued that, and then my freshman year of college at Pitt, uh, I was the only kid from my school to go there. It was really cool, big into sports, great sports school there. And I'd always heard at my public school called Westford Academy, for some reason, uh, they would always say we're a college preparatory school. So I always had that mentality that college is probably going to be very similar to what I'm doing in high school right now. So I thought, well, this is how I do it in high school. This is how I'll do it in college too. And my grades reflected that my first semester. And going back to that old saying, college wasn't that fun at that point. <laughs> and uh, 
once I left and got sick, which I guess was kind of a blessing to make up for those grades I was getting, uh, I felt like when I was going to community college, it was a fresh start, not just health-wise, but also education-wise. I had something to prove. So I went to community college, did my first year there, and then ironically got into my first honors course in college. I was moved to that for English or something like that. I don't even remember now. But uh, once I finished at community college, I continued to maintain that high enthusiasm for education, high effort level when I want to, went on to UMass Amherst. And senioritis kicks in a little bit. But you, know, it, you still have to find that way of making college fun by really doing what you're supposed to be there for, which is classes, grades, everything like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if what I just answered made any sense. But. <laughs> no, it definitely makes sense. I kind of had the opposite experience from John. So I also went to a school. It was so hard. I was writing eight-page essays in seventh grade. And it was super Sheesh, annoying. I'm in the same yeah. boat as you. I know exactly and what you're doing. And it was so difficult. And, like, I almost didn't graduate senior year because I was I was super excited about one topic for a thesis. And my teacher, I wanted to change it. And my teacher was like, no, you can't do that. You don't have time. And then two days before the um, paper was due, this is a 14-page research paper that I could not graduate without. And she's like, you need to change two of your books. You need to get rid of these two. And I'm like, that's where all my research is. Mm. So, like, I worked really hard on fixing that. And I, she gave me a failing grade. And she's like, you have to rewrite this in, within two weeks or you're not graduating. And I worked so hard to, like, flip it around. And I managed to, like, get through. But I was like, after that, I'm like, I don't care about anything else. Like, my, my work ethic went from, like, kind of okay to just downhill. And once I finished my AP test, I was like, I'm not doing – no one talked to me because I'm not doing anything anymore. Um, and I was so worried that college was going to be the exact same. And then I went in, and my – the spring semester of my freshman year, we had to write a research paper. And I'm like, nine to ten pages? Oh, I got this. It's no <laughs> issue. So I found that college was actually easier for me. Um, Because there was just so much work poured onto me in high school. And it was, um, like, I found my I wanted to do well in the classes. My work ethic went so much higher. I read the books for each of my classes. Like, even my core classes, I was like, I'm going to read the textbooks. I had such an issue with summer reading. I don't know if you had that Mm -hmm. issue, but... uh... Summer reading was... No, it wasn't it much was of an the issue. It just wasn't when we did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That was, was the, the best in college when we didn't have to do summer reading. I was like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. No more. I got to read books I wanted to read. Yeah. Um, and I mean, one of the great things about Champlain was that we have they have what's called an upside-down curriculum. So we, I was taking gen ed courses, but I was also taking writing courses. I was taking courses that I wanted to take. Um, so I was like, this is really interesting. This stuff is pertinent to me. And I would loved being in college I loved doing the work that I was doing I loved writing the essays and doing the homework um so it went way up for freshman year and then senior it kind of stayed the same because I had a lot of friends in my classes so like after class I was taking a web development class so like after class Mm -hmm. (laughs) we would go down to my friend's apartment and we would sit around have lunch and we would just do our homework together and it was done Mm -hmm. so that we were all ready for next week and I'm like great all set and I was taking a photography class and I was always late to my second class because I was like, I'm going to play around with stuff in the dark in the, uh, the dark room. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's especially, I think, during senior year, you're taking um, more of the classes that you want to take. If you have, like, yeah. extra gen ed credits, it's gen eds that you want to take. It's things that interest you, like web development or um, photography um, and things like that. Or if, it's, <clears throat> if you're at a school that doesn't start your major right away, it it's a time when you're taking courses that you really want to learn stuff about. Um, so I think that for me, at least my senior year was like my best work, work ethic wise for college, not for high school. High school was the worst. <laughs> I had friends who finished all their credits early. So by the time second semester senior year, they could take all the fun yep. classes and your right offers a scuba diving class. What? So my cousin I took have that. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, guys. I have to go re-enroll. No. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. It's just a pond. That's, it's just that's a pond. That's all you get. Knee-deep water. <laughs> that makes sense. Over, just get a little snorkel. It's a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> it's they a put little shake. things in there so you can look at them. It's oh, just so a little plastic little fish. Yeah. <laughs> you go swimming in a fish that's tank. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. really cool. cool. Yeah, scuba diving and sailing. No. Yes. I only said the sailing. You are right. Yeah. That's a cool class. That's a, yeah, I think Karen mentioned at Champlain we had the upside down curriculum. So when I mentioned uh, Bishop Gurdon was the school I went to, which is a private school and very much a college prep 
high school, so it was getting hammered every single day on all these different things, and then getting into college, and it felt a lot more lax. Mm -hmm. And not only because it was a little bit easier, because you have kids coming from all over yep. that are in different backgrounds, and they're trying to get everybody filed along the same way, but I was able to take courses that I was interested in too. So it was more of, okay, here's the, the building blocks of your education and here's the things that you want to do that interest you. And whenever you're in a program that you really like and enjoy, uh, it's no longer a task. It's, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that's always the, the saying is like, don't work somewhere that um, yeah. is, is work. It's work somewhere that is something that you like to do. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm still here, but. Because uh, <laughs> oh, uh, you get to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's uh, like obviously love it here and uh, love doing what I do. So it's yeah. uh, always fun. That I found like was probably the hardest part of senior year too of co of college is that I just like I wanted to get into work. I mean, I love. Yeah. I, I got to take a couple of fun classes. I was taking a dance class that I really liked, but I was like, just want to be done. I want to go to work. So that I feel like was one of the things that was like pulling me down was that I was like. I just want to get into the adult life. I'm kind of over with the class schedule. That's um, how I felt too. But really, it, yeah. for me, it was like, I don't know if you know if I want to work. I just wanted money. Yeah, I was yes! So, <laughs> so sick of the ramen every other day. Yeah. And yeah. The rice. And I was going to say, not uh, on the money part, but, uh, or technically it ties in, but like internships. I don't yeah. know if you guys had any of that. So you get a taste yeah. of what it is, and then it gets stripped back from you. So Especially you when it's yeah. an unpaid internship. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's when you get your taste. But even then, with internships, like it's you get that taste, and you're like, yes, I love doing this, and then it gets taken away, and you're like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's a fun part of senior year too, and yeah. junior year even. I think I I did a bunch of internships, and it was, it was all, they were always fun, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Let me keep doing it, mm -hmm. and pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Question three is by Kimberly Nay. How do you make time for yourself when you go to college and work a full time job? So I didn't work a full-time job, but I worked a part-time job, and I felt like you had to learn to balance out work, social life, and school. Um, I was a nanny after school four, time, four or five times a week, and um, it took up so much of my time because I, it was a half an hour drive from school to the house, and I had to get there right after class to pick the kids up from the bus. And then when I got there, I was... They didn't really always want to hang out with me, so I tried doing homework while I was with them. And I always felt like I, was, I wasn't I was doing both, like I wasn't doing my work well. I wasn't um, watching these kids as well as I should be. Um, so I had to learn to just kind of um, shift my schedule a little bit to make sure I prioritized my work school. But then also when I was with the kids, uh, focused on them and was able to be with them and help them in any way they needed. Um, so yeah, I think that's a huge part. Uh, finding a job that works well with your schedule too, because if the job is taking up more time, then it should. Have, when you could be focusing on your homework, then I think maybe you should find another job that fits with your schedule better. I think uh, also kind of reverse of what you said is having the job, and you need to get your paycheck and live your life and. You need money to do that, yeah. so uh, sometimes having a full-time job in college, if you want to advance, you can take uh, only a certain amount of classes rather than taking on the full boatload and going as part-time in college instead of full-time and full-time, because it is going to be a massive struggle if you're trying to do both of those and maintaining not only just going to school and going to your job every day, but going out with friends and keeping up with everything, it's, it's insane. Uh, I do highly disregard, dis unrecommend, <laughs> you can do it. I highly take grammatical. <laughs> so um, don't do that. Just if, you yeah. if, if you have the ability to take only a few courses or it's one or two, uh, focus on the courses that really will pertain to you getting a job in that field. Yeah. So uh, in my scenario, I know it's very different between a web developer and somebody like a nurse where I can take courses that are specific to doing front-end development and I can do a boot camp and it's like a 12-week process and that's a very useful skill that I can go and use and bring out into the world. Whereas a nurse, you're gonna need that degree, a lawyer, you're gonna need that degree. Uh, so there are fields that are easier to work with and gain those skills that you need, whereas some of them are 
bigger and harder to tackle. Don't underestimate the sort of validity of like night classes and online classes. So I was for a while looking into law school because I was crazy for a little (laughs) bit. (laughs) And um, I was at this event for a school which will be unnamed. There was a gentleman there who was talking about how they have a night school night night class schedule and I was like that's exactly what I want I was working full time and I was like I don't have time I can't take time off I have to work full time to be able to pay for this degree and this guy was like I would just take out the extra loans or whatever and you know go for day classes and everything I don't understand why people have night classes I'm like because life gets in the way yeah. um, my dad went to law school for night classes most of the people that I, I worked with at, t- at the time were because I worked in a law office like I, all the other clerks who are in law school were taking night classes because it's number one degrees are expensive yeah. um, and you can't always take out all those loans especially knowing how interest in all that works it's crazy hmm. compounding and, interest huh? all that compounding interest all that stuff oh it's so stressful <laughs> But, like, um, working full-time, I noticed that, you know, every once in a while, because we worked downtown in Boston, I would walk by the library, and I would see the kids going in on Friday, like, they just worked a full eight hours, they were going into the library to work, and I talked to one of them on Monday, I was like, hey, I saw you go in the library on Friday? Why are you there on Friday? Like, that should be your night. And he's like, no, 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 I work on Friday, take Saturday off, and then I go back and I work Sunday night, so that you you break up that time, and you set, the, the biggest thing, I think, is setting aside time for you. So I didn't work full time in college, but I worked like ten different jobs. So I felt like I was working full time, um, and like every once in a while, I would just shut my phone off and yeah. watch Netflix and go to bed. And then on Saturday, I would like wake up on my own terms, and it was like I wasn't on duty. If someone came to the door, I'd be like, "Go to this person; they're on duty. I can't deal with this right now." <laughs> I would check in with them later and be like, "Hey, like, are you okay? You know, did that situation get handled?" But you also have to remember to take time for yourself. If that means, like, if you have a family that you work that you live with, um, taking time to be with your family. Um, if that means, like, telling your kids or your brother or whatever, like, I need this amount of time to do my thing, to do to work on schoolwork. Like, find that time and find that balance that works for you. Yeah, I have I have two points here. Um, first. When you're considering doing full-time work as well as going to college at the same time, don't be prepared for this to be a quick process. You know, don't, don't think you're going to work and get your degree in a year. Uh, perfect example, my grandfather, after he had my dad and was married, living in Chelmsford, he was a chemist and decided to go to Northeastern to get his bachelor's degree, and he did night classes for 12 years. Every semester he took a class, and after 12 years he finished summa cum laude, he would kick my dad and my grandmother out of the house every night he needed to study, but it's a long, long process. So don't go into this thinking, this is going to be quick and easy. It's something you got to be committed to. It's Good expensive. Him, yeah, he, uh, he doesn't like to talk about it much, but he's just a humble guy. <laughs> the dark days. Well, that, that goes back to what I was saying, too, about only taking a few classes and don't go like right. hard into both. Don't burn yourself out quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing as well, in my current position as a digital advertising specialist, I write and I see a lot of ads for a lot of these schools that specifically target people who are working adults, mm-hmm. um, MBA programs, nursing programs, engineering, etc. So if you already have the full-time job and you want to stick with that full-time job, maybe don't necessarily look at switching jobs, but look at switching schools. Because I, I don't know about your case, Kimberly, but it almost sounds like here you're working and you don't know what school to go to yet. You just want to know how to balance it. Do your research and look for the schools that are specifically targeting or who have programs specific for students that are working Um, because you won't be the only student in that classroom or the only person at that school working full-time. It would be a collection of you guys. The curriculum would be going around that. Um, Yeah, just do your research for sure. uh, Emily is actually in graduate school right now, and she's a full-time nurse, so... Her schedule has been hectic and very stressful for not just her, but the both of us and trying to figure out when we have time and uh, looping back to having schedules. It's very useful and helpful to jot down what time things are going to happen and where we're going to be and what time is study time, what time is uh, like dinner out, uh, like the other night we went out. Uh, When are things going to happen? And then that way nothing's like 
it's crunch time and I gotta yeah. get this done and freaking out and the house is on fire and dog ran over the fence and every, everything or into, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> into the fence that yeah. has happened I know uh, so yeah I, I, the scheduling is definitely important and uh, I, I feel that don't try to do both yeah full I can't reiterate that enough. I, I think you're going to burn out way too quickly and be very stressed. And if you need to take a semester off, do it. Yeah. People do it all yeah. the time. A semester, a year. Just make sure you go back. Don't, yeah. Yeah. don't go halfway and then just be done with it because you have nothing to show at the end. You've put the money. You've put the effort in. Finish what you started. That's uh, looping back to that, too. Emily took a semester off for when we got married because we had so much going on. Bought a house, and, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. if, if you have certain life events that are popping up and you know it, it's yeah. no problem to just take the semester, pump the brakes, life and happens. then pick it up and yeah. finish Figure it out what's important for your health and yeah. yourself. And don't try to be mm-hmm. alone. So, I mean, if you're, you have, if you're living with a partner, if you're living with a family, um, <clears throat> If you live near your parents and you have kids, like talk to them and see what what they can do to help ease this burden for you. You know, talk to your your partner about like what you guys can do. You know, going out, even just going out for dinner once every month or so, can just be a little thing that you know helps you get along. Get takes your mind off everything for like ten minutes or twenty minutes, and make sure you shut your mind off from work and school for that. Um, because you do like you you can burn yourself out that way and you don't want to do that because if you like what you're doing full time and you like the class that you're taking like you want to do well and you you can't do that if you're if it's always on your mind and you don't take time for yourself so like you're asking how to make time for yourself dinner go to a movie just take a nap sometimes that can be enough um read a book that you want to read and things like that that has nothing to do with your classes or work just shut everything off for a little bit even if it's 20 minutes and just take time away from it so that you can take care of you yeah well you said reaching out to family and friends but it's also very nice to have your alone time where Mm -hmm. emily and i are very much in that same boat of when i'm stressed at work and i just need like a day or you know four hours to just be hey can we just live separately but in the same house <laughs> yeah. don't talk to me yeah, it's, a, it's a huge mental relief and you have that ability to kind of recoup everything and get ready for the next day yeah yep and go out like be be alone for a little bit if that if that's what you need um i'm not an introvert i'm an extrovert through and through but every once in a while i'm like i just need to go and do something alone i went to the movies alone last friday and it was Great. What did you see? Uh, I saw the Mary Poppins one. And it was I just great. saw that one. Was good? Yeah, it was really good. And was I was there. Uh, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke was yeah. in it, so that was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Was it good? Yeah. yeah. 93 years old, dance on yeah. the desk. Wow. wow. Yeah. So let's review that movie. Yeah. Don't see reviews. Yeah. But even though like, it was just something I could do, and you know, I had a little bit of stress at work because we've had deadlines going on, and I was like, this is nice. I'm just, it was just me and no one there being like, I need to make comments in your ear about this movie, and I got to enjoy it. It was great. So do yeah. something that you're going to enjoy. I'm an introvert, so I love my alone time. A little cubicle over there. <laughs> no one talks to me. It's great. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think everyone, like introvert, extrovert, everyone kind of needs that alone time at yeah. some point, at least like once a week to decompose and teach yeah. stress after everything, especially if you're working a full-time job and taking night classes, you need something Don't be to break it up. Just, it's great. <laughs> like Sunday to yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so fourth question here, what mental health resources are available in college? Uh, this one hits me personally. It's, it's a difficult topic to talk mental health. Difficult to bring up, difficult to address, uh, even to mention other people, mention to a doctor. Uh, so my freshman year of college, I keep mentioning Pitt because obviously a lot happened there. Um, between the, the grades, between the distractions of meeting new people, um, getting sick with mono, all that stuff, to pile on top of that, I also found myself feeling kind of depressed. And I always thought it was a weird thing I thought, I felt a little bit in high school too, senior year of high school, and our school does a class trip to Disney every year. And I remember thinking to myself before the trip, you know, I'm feeling a little depressed, but this trip to Disney, there's going to be no distractions, all my friends will be there, this will snap me right out of it. And depression doesn't really work that way. And I'm not trying to turn this into a, I have depression, this is what it is. But 
my experience, you get to college, you think, all right, maybe this will snap me out of it. it, it maybe going out and having fun with friends will snap me out of it. But it, it doesn't come to that. It, it's something you need to address, something you need to take care of. And partway through, I mentioned to my parents, which was a tough conversation to have because they see you one way, but internally you feel another way where the way I described it was it felt like I was in the passenger seat of my own life. You know, everything kept going. You don't really notice everything fully going around you. Um, so I decided to finally bring it up to my parents and they, of course, fully supportive. I don't think they were going to yell at me for saying, hey, this is how I feel. Um, but I mentioned it to them and they helped me find resources at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I started off by going and seeing a, a, a therapist there, a counselor, who talked to me for a, a session, found out what was going on, had me take a couple tests. Nothing, no needles, so I was fine with that. Uh, nothing too painful, you know, how do you feel during this day? Do you ever feel like hurting yourself, which I never did, but they ask you all these questions because they have to. They have to make sure you're, you're feeling the way that you say you are. And eventually they came out and said, yeah, we do think you have depression. So they gave me some medication, which I still take to this day. And it takes a little bit of time to work, but after two, three weeks of taking the medicine, you finally start feeling a little bit better. And on top of that, they also recommended I went and see a, uh, a separate therapist, one person to just talk to. And, you know, I'm away from home. I was hours away in Pennsylvania where I grew up in Massachusetts. And speaking to this person, even if it was, uh, you know, I'm struggling finding all these different connections or I'm having a tough time connecting with the people around me or the Patriots lost last night. Everyone's giving me crap. It's very stressful to me. Just talking about that stuff, even though it might sound silly to you, even though it might sound difficult to do, just talking to them. They're not going to judge you. It's their job to help you and listen. That was extremely helpful as well. And to this day, I still see a person not as often as I would at school. I would go every week because those resources were available. Most of the time they're free. You just set up an appointment uh, if you have a referral. But making sure that you take advantage of those resources as hard as it is to do. Um, that's the most important recommendation you can have, even if it means exercising to help you snap out of it or going and seeking help like I did or telling someone. Mm -hmm. Telling is a big thing as well. And as, as we all know, you know, people sometimes in college, more often than it should, succumb to the depression, so succumb to the stress, um, which is obviously a horrible thing because you see all the time people say, just ask how someone's doing. Well, in this case, ask how someone's doing because half the time I didn't want to say how I was doing because I sometimes I'm an extrovert, sometimes I'm an introvert. I don't think that's possible, but I'm sure I'm one of the one of the other. But sometimes someone could be quiet because that's who they are. Sometimes they could be quiet because they want to talk to someone and just reach out. So seeking those mental health opportunities, getting help, taking medicine. Some people out there hate medicine, but sometimes it helps, sometimes it's necessary. You know, I, I feel like I'm a completely different person. I don't feel like I'm in the passenger seat anymore now. And this all happened in college. It had nothing to do with the college itself. I loved Pitt, loved Middlesex, loved UMass. But it's just something that, it just happens. Depression, anxiety, all these things. Just seek the help. That's, and the help is certainly there as well. And I think knowing your resources on campus is important, yeah. um, and you can easily find it on their website. Uh, just if you look up the health clinic, uh, they have a bunch of online things. I um, actually looked up URIs, and they have a assessment, uh, anonymous mm -hmm. assessment test you can take um, to kind of not diagnose yourself, but just see like where you're at. Um, and it's a professional that gives you your feedback to you, but it's kind of a way to do it where you don't have to go into a clinic and talk to a person one-on-one, -on -one, because that can be intimidating sometimes, but also important. Um, so maybe, you know, you take the test, you figure out if, you know, you're at a place where maybe you want to go talk to a professional, and it kind of helps you that way. It's also um, good to know what's available in case there's something tragic that happens, like the loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. um, my freshman year of college was the Newtown shooting, and there was a student who lived with me in the same dorm, and he was from the area, and he just, I saw him at the first, the day that it happened, and he just looked so upset. And I think, <clears throat> I don't personally know if he went to the counseling, but that was available to him. And they made sure it was known. And I was there for the Boston Marathon bombing, and I was so upset with that, because I know so many people who go down to the finish line, I know a lot of first responders in Boston. And I was, 
I had already booked an appointment with the counseling and I went in there and they're like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, I can't talk about anything right now because I, I don't know how to process this. And <clears throat> if there's a situation like that, like it's good to seek out the counseling in your area. Sometimes yeah. people, um, if there's a tragedy, like if every once in a while, unfortunately, if a student passed away that happened my first week of college, they'll bring in extra counselors to be available to students or they'll tell you what a good helpline to call is a local um, an anonymous helpline that you can call and talk to. Um, and all of that information is readily available. And if it's not, if you don't know where to find it, you can seek out your, one of your professors. You can seek out um, someone in any department of the school, um, at, of any staff member, an RA, a, um, if you have a peer advisor, one of them, or even just going to sort of the building you think the counseling office might be in and be like, hey, where do I find help? It's readily available. And they want, in college, they want you to reach that help. And a lot of times it is like, Mackenzie said free so take advantage of that while it is free and while it's available for you so you can start to learn those coping mechanisms and so that if you need to take advantage of them you know how to find them and you know where to find them and even after college you know it can help you figure out like okay this is what I need I need counseling or I need medication or I need to find this per this type of person this type of help and it will help you orient yourself with what you need um, and it's all readily available yeah, I think uh, we've all kind of touched on depression as a, a giant topic, but mental health is a vast array of different types of disabilities. So, I mean, even um, health, uh, like eating disabilities. Uh, my friend, uh, for example, in college had a very addictive personality. So when we met him, he was very much into video games and it would be times where we're like, hey, we need to go out, let's go out on night on the town type deal. And he was like, no, I have a raid. Like, I need to, I need to be here in this seat. Um, I get it. There's people on the other end that are relying on you. But at the same time, as you mentioned, passenger, uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's missing all these opportunities that are happening right here, right around him. Uh, and he had a very unique situation happen where we kind of had an intervention type deal, sat down with him. So he, he decided that he was going to, um, start working away from that but then he got into a unhealthy addiction to running mm -hmm. uh, and then it became an unhealthy addiction into dancing uh, so he his personality just kind of grips onto things yeah. and works through it but now he's um, he's working in uh, industry where it's kind of funny but uh, it's a slot machine uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, he's there. He's seeking uh, the you know help yeah. to this day, and he's gotten a, a, a lot better since the ten years that I've known him now, twelve years. Uh, so, I mean, the one thing we keep bringing up too is that the resources are available, and that's not only true for college. I know the question was specific to college, but in high school, you can go out and you can reach out to a counselor. John mentioned talking to somebody, anybody, mm -hmm. or having, if you're just sitting around, you notice somebody, just they, they, yep. they're off and you, you can sense that, go up and talk to them. It's, it's a huge deal when somebody comes over and just expresses that they're concerned about you and you have that, that mm -hmm. talk with them. And it could, could potentially save somebody's life. It's uh, absolutely unreal. Yeah. Um, and then, the other thing I want to bring up too is that if you're not comfortable going to a counselor or going anywhere, uh, mentalhealth.gov has just a whole slew of information and you can find anything on there and, and really work through it. Going back to your story about your friend, I also know counselors can help people who have friends who are having issues. Yeah. So you can kind of go to them if you're a friend. Um, you can see that there's issues and they can help you help your friend. Yeah through the situation. That way, if the friend is not willing to go see someone, you can kind of be there and as an emotional sport if you don't know how to handle the yeah. situation, which can be difficult for a college kid. I'm really glad you brought up addiction because that is an issue that goes rampant in college um, as well as um, domestic abuse. Not necessarily um, always violence, but you know, emotional abuse too. I knew uh, I had a friend in college who was in an emotionally abusive relationship and I was like, I don't know how to help this person. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I ended up getting out of the relationship before it escalated too much. But at the same time, there are, like you said, um, you, you just need to seek out, like, if, even if it's not you, go find you know a counselor and be like, what can I do to help this person get out of it? Um, and it doesn't necessarily, it, it's, it can be anonymous too, if you, if, you, if you need it to be. If you're like, I don't know how to, to say this sort of thing, you, there are ways to, to help them without 
necessarily like pushing them and things like that and it's that's always a fear is trying to help and being pushed out too I feel like um and like you said like you can be the mental health resource for a friend um if you notice that they're especially you're if you're in a forced triple and you notice one of your roommates is a bit off for in some way they're always going to parties or they're not talking to anyone that that's a real issue is alcohol addiction is a huge issue in college that never gets addressed really because like oh it's just the college thing but it you can address that with your friends and be like look i noticed that you're you're going to parties a lot you're not going to class you're always hung over like this is an issue and it's a very difficult conversation to have but it's an important one too we got so dark here but this is very important. Yeah, this is very important for for college, and this is I'm kind of I'm really glad we got this dark in this series because this is super important for college, and like no one ever talks about it, and it's like. But the biggest issue is we can talk about it, but the biggest thing is seeing it or experiencing it. And you'll notice that once you get to college, or if you're already at college, um, as you mentioned, friends can be your biggest support group there, uh, even though the college could offer free resources, free counseling, free group therapy. That was another thing that they offered. It wasn't my cup of tea, but it is something that you can do. Uh, even just unplugging, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, just unplug. If you need to sit yourself in your room for an hour, close the door, kick your two roommates out if you need to, or if you're lucky enough to have a single, just sit in that room and enjoy your time unplugged from it all. Take away from the stress. Take away from all the influences coming at you, all the influencers. Um, and I think as well, once you finally come to grips with the fact that there is a, an addiction, a depression, an anxiety, something along those lines, that's where you truly start to see who your fake friends are versus your true friends. Because if you're locking yourself in your room for an hour, two hours a day, that's not the healthiest thing. But if you do it for a day, uh, those fake friends will be pushing, wondering where the hell you are. The real friends will completely understand and talk to you after you're out of it or while you're in there. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. The friends can be one of the biggest helps in this mental health uh, journey. Yeah. You, uh, you bring up a good point too about uh, locking yourself in the room and being in there uh, alone for X amount of time. And one of my closest friends to this day is uh, very much an introvert and was when we were in college. And so we would always try to get him out. But we did have one friend that was more of the <laughs> fake friend where whenever he would lock himself in the room, just really didn't want to deal with people. And we knew that he needed his, mm-hmm. his time to just kind of decompress and relax. Uh, he would bang on the door and start yelling and trying to get him out. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, we're still friendly, uh, but it's, he's not one of my like, yeah. cl- close, close buddies. Um, and it's important, yeah, to recognize, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you see somebody that, even if it's not in your friend group, but you just know that something's off, it, it could be, uh, you know, life-changing to go out and talk to them and see what's up. The other thing, too, though, is be there, but don't be there, you know, the whole time. You know, give, give them the yeah. space they need. Don't be overbearing. Don't be shoving it in their face. Because yeah. just like if you're drinking and someone says you're drunk, that's the most annoying thing in the world to hear. Yep. Yeah. If you're feeling down and someone says, you're down, I can tell, that's not that helpful either. Just be there. You know, yeah. Let them come to you or offer. Yeah. Offer is just as big as anything. Yeah. Instead of saying specifically, like, you're down, we need to do this, be like, you seem really upset. What yeah. do you need from me? What can I do for you? Um, rather than that. And you mentioned friends, and that's, that's a really mm-hmm. important part. And I noticed sort of as I especially in junior year, I sort of switched friend groups because I noticed that the friends around me weren't listening to what I needed. So it was a situation where they were drinking on campus. I said, I'm an RA now. I don't really feel comfortable doing this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be involved in this. I might get called into work. And they're like, no, 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 do it, do it, do it. And then I got called into work and I was like, well, it's a good thing I didn't. And then like they kept pushing. And then the newer friend group that I got into, I was like, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm like, okay. We'll, we won't push you to do that. They did their own thing too, um, but at the same time, they weren't pushing me. And they, they, you need to make sure that your friends listen to you and what you need. And if they're not listening to you and what you say you need, it is something that's going to be good for you. So if you're saying like, if you've been locked in your room for a week um, and you're not sick, that's or anything, not what I'm talking. Yeah, no, no, I know, no, but no, <laughs> don't but like, do that. No, but if you've been locked in your room for weeks saying I I need space, I need space, and you don't mm. need space, you need to be around people, and they're like. 
um, no, this is what you're doing is unhealthy. You're going to come and you're going to talk to us about what's wrong. I, if that's, you know, what's been happening, I hadn't seen my friends in like a month and they're like, you're going to come hang out with us for one night. And I needed that. Yeah. And I, I was like, no, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. But I, I wasn't fine. And I needed that. So if your friends listen to you in different ways and like have that connection, like look for that in your friends. Um, Instead of, like you said, like, them telling you, like, this is what's wrong with you, this is what you need, mm-hmm. having them, like, listen to you and listen to you in different ways, too, um, so that, you know, just finding that connection it can be the biggest mental health resource is just surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you and who are going to help you, um, like, who are going to lift you instead of pushing you. One other thing just randomly popped in my head, because I know right now, for example, my grandmother's going through chemotherapy treatment, which is a side note, but... My dad and myself as well really needed some emotional support groups as well. And some people aren't this way, some people are, but going and finding a church, finding religion on campus. Some campuses are super religious, Jesuit colleges or something. I I don't know, the ones I went to weren't like that. But, um, you know, every college has a chapel or a temple or a church on there. And sometimes just going on a Sunday, sometimes going to confession, sometimes just praying every day. That also helps with your mental health. And don't be ashamed to do it if you're the only one who's praying in your friend group because it's, it's about your mental health. Just take care of what you need to do. Going back to the friends for a second, when I uh, went abroad, I was going by myself. I didn't know anybody in the program going over at the, when I first started going through the application process. And I was so sure I could do it by myself. I was like, I'm really confident. I'm really excited. And then the weeks before... Um, I started to get a lot of anxiety about it because I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like I'm going to a foreign country I've never been to by myself. Um, and so I ended up finding out that my friend from school had also, uh, we weren't that close, but she was also applying to the program and she was going to be there. And we ended up living together while abroad. And she was like the best thing for me over there because I don't, I probably wouldn't have made it through the semester abroad without her. Um, uh, yeah, it was really hard to be that far away from family and in a place you've never been before. People have no idea who they are. Um, so friends, was the, that was the greatest thing about going abroad. And even uh, just like if you're in college and you're feeling alone or whatever, the, we live in the time where you can just pop on your phone yep. and do Skype, you can do what, um, FaceTime, whatever it is, and talk to somebody, um, somebody that you trust. I know that's one thing is, especially when you're in a new place and you, you don't know people, it's kind of hard to let them in. But uh, reaching out to somebody that you know specifically and talking about your issues and problems and getting over it. So, Thank you, everybody, for watching the College Express podcast all about being a new year and a new you. I want to give a special thank you for Mackenzie for joining us, and she's going to be here moving forward. And also John for coming on board and sharing his thoughts and insights. We'll never see anything. <laughs> we will never see John ever again. Uh, not right. even us. We won't see him. Not Starting right now. If you have any questions or concerns that you want to hear about in a future podcast episode, please reach out into the comments below and let us know. Uh, And we'll be releasing these again at the start of every single month. We'll have the first week where Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, one question will be answered. And then Friday, the entire podcast will be released to you. So please let us know if you like that schedule, if you want anything to change, if you have any comments or feedback or anything along those lines. Reach out in the comments, and also remember to go to collegepress.com for all your college and scholarship needs, and we look forward to tuning in next time with you guys. Thank you.